everyone. I apologize as I'm moving this. It told me no network connection and then it changed its mind. So hopefully, let me just double check here. Just double checking that I am actually live. So I do apologize. Oh, perfect. I am. Whoops. So, hi, Vicki. Sorry, I'm just still getting set up here. There we go. Hopefully, uh, yes, I'll be able to see everybody's comments. All right, hello and welcome. I am Lisa from Stamp and Create with Lisa. I'm just gonna turn my stand here, I apologize. Facebook came up, told me that uh, I couldn't do a Facebook Live, that I didn't have enough network and now I'm okay. So, yes, Vicki, I know you're playing with it. It is funny. It's my uh, product of the week, that Dino Days. Um, I really love this bundle. It's really super cute. And I did see, hi, Judy. I did see, Vicki, that you had posted on the team page that you had been playing with this set um, just a few minutes ago, actually. So um, hopefully this will give you a new idea. But you made a really cute shaker card. So uh, thank you. Um, so... Welcome. Um, and again, I'm Lisa from Stamp and Create with Lisa. I was having a few seconds of technical difficulties, but I think we have it figured out now. So this week I am featuring the Dino Days bundle from Stampin' Up. Sorry, I should uh, pull that down a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. But uh, I loved this bundle. This is one of the first ones that was on my must-have list. So we have these cute little stamps and we have the matching dies. Some of the, there is also matching paper, which I can pull out that I am going to use today. So give me one second here. Um, having said that, most of the paper I've chopped. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, but I'm gonna use this cute egg paper today, which has these cute little pink um, dinosaur background. There's, oh my. This is why I keep it all in, uh, and bags so hopefully I have enough of it to show you in this so oops so this is really cute fun paper so you have the dinosaurs on the back side you have just kind of a generic B side you have the pink with the dinosaurs and on the back of that the egg shape that I'm going to try and use today then we have the blue with the dinosaurs and on the back of it kind of a motif page that matches and it's just the coordinating colors. Uh, just making sure. So then we also have this dinosaur and, and the one thing I wanted to show you about this dinosaur paper is if you were to get out this here, these dies are multi-purpose. I should flip them on the cut side down. So you can see where you can actually cut out the dinosaurs from the designer series paper. And I love it when Stampin' Up! does this so that we don't have to stamp all the time. I know that sounds lazy, um, but there's some things we can't do with stamps as easily as you can do on the designer series paper. For instance, um, well, he's really cute when we stamp this is all going to be one color and it's really hard to get his tummy in pink without uh, messing up the paper right so it's much easier to die cut it and you get that multi-color out of there and then there's also the pterodactyl die I'll just shove the other one over so you can see so you can die cut those four which is a really great feature of our paper Hi Stephanie, welcome. So, um, I wanted to show you that. I'm gonna throw those aside for a second. So then in addition to that paper on the back, there's animal tracks. Then we have the pink, which might actually be my favorite, I'm not gonna lie. We have leaves on the back, and I don't know if anybody else thought about this, if they you've seen this paper or not. Um, this would actually make really cute Christmas cards. <laughs> So, um, not what you might think of with dinosaur paper packs, but it would work really well for Christmas. And I believe that's everything in the pack. There might be one or two sheets that I missed 
um, because I've cut them all up for card class tomorrow. But you get the gist of it. It's really cute, really fun, colorful paper. So I am gonna set that aside. So one of the benefits of being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator is we get this quarterly magazine called Stampin' Success. And it has business tips in it, but it also has card ideas, which is really important for us. And I really thought this was a cute card. I actually didn't think I had any of that pink left, but I wanted to make a different version of it anyhow and show that, well, they give us these lovely ideas. There is also ways to make it work for us um, outside of just this one idea. So I'm going to make that card today, but I'm going to do a different version of it. So I'm going to set the dies aside just so I don't bump them off with my arm. And I wanted to use this paper and I'm actually, I had a request for a baby card. So I'm going to do um, Look Who's Hatched because I think that's a really cute sentiment. Uh, especially, we just had my little sister's baby shower. My middle sister, I should say. Um, and Bentley, of course, had to bring his own gift because he likes to do that. Speaking of, you're going to hear the thunder steps upstairs because he's upstairs with my mom today. But I have some Granny Apple green paper. So technically, I don't believe... When you look at the back of the designer series paper, any of it, it has a list of the colors that were used. So in this particular pack, the Dino Roar designer series paper, Flirty Flamingo, Lovely Lipstick, Mango Melody, Old Olive, Pineapple Punch, Pool Party, Pretty Peacock and Whisper White were used. However, what I discovered is although Old Olive was used, it goes really well with Granny Apple Green, which is really good because I don't have that much left of Old Olive. I'm almost out after cutting for card class. It's on my to buy list at the moment, especially with Christmas coming. So I'm going to cut this card. This is an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. If you are overseas in Europe or Australia, I understand you use metric sizes and you will probably have to adjust, but I'm gonna cut it at five and a half inches, so half a sheet, and I'm going to score it at four and a quarter inches. There we go. So next up, Oh, where's my magazine? Just so I can show you. I'm gonna do these background strips here. So my card base is four and a quarter inches this way uh, once I fold it. So I'm gonna make each of these strips three quarters of an inch and then I'm going to, um, oh, I should, yes, that will work. Sorry, because three quarters of an inch. So that's one, two, three, three and four inches plus a quarter, which is perfect. And then I'm gonna leave a quarter inch on each end, so I'm gonna cut them to five inches overall. So I'm gonna cut the um, five inches this way. So right now I have to think. No, I wanna do three quarters inch first. <coughs> Sorry, sometimes well, I don't pre-make these cards. I kind of, these are process videos for me just from a timing standpoint, which uh, means that sometimes I have to think on the fly, which is not always the safest bet. But that's gonna give me two strips and I want to do four overall. So I'm gonna cut another three quarter inch piece. There we go. Hopefully you guys are having a great day. My goddaughter was here this morning and she was helping me out in my office, which was great. I had some grab bags to get ready for a couple of events. So she um, stuffed about 300 out of the 350 that I needed stuffed this morning. So I will always take the help. And she likes getting away from her little sisters because it's summer and she's been home for a month. <laughs> so it works out well. <laughs> there. There's five inch. And five inch. Okay. So I'm going to glue these down really quickly. Really quickly. 
So again, I had that pre-scored at four and a quarter inches, which makes a great card base. And I'm going to take these little strips. And you could easily use the backside too. I know technically this is old olive in the green, but it actually works really well with granny apple green. Granny apple green is almost like a shade of it or something. So. Okay. My trusty tear tape. But I had in my head color. I really wanted to use green for some reason this afternoon. Okay, and one more. Oops. So, and I've noticed some people struggling lately using tear tape. So one trick is if you're having trouble peeling the backing off is to burnish it back down with your finger and then peel it up and it comes up really well. I don't usually have too much trouble, but I think I burnish it as I go now. I've gotten pretty quick at using it. But I do find the tear tape sticks a lot better than snail. And I'm not a liquid adhesive person. I've just never gotten used to it. But the thing to remember with tear tape is you really don't need a whole lot. I said that it was easy and then that's why I had trouble with that one. Okay, so perfect. So I'm going to, because I left a quarter of an inch everywhere and of course I didn't use grid paper as my placemat today, I'm going to eyeball it, but I'm pretty good at doing that. And I'm mostly concerned with making sure that the ends line up more than anything, because if they line up, everything else will. This definitely would have been a good one to have the grid paper out for. And I think I am going to adjust it all, so give me one second here. I did remember to bring my take your pick tool over, which is good. So if you haven't seen this used before, the spatula end of the take your pick tool, you just slide it under and you can pop it off somewhat. It will take some of the paper off, but I'm not too worried. Most of the card's going to be covered. So you guys are really quiet today. I'm not getting much. And I do, I'm noticing on my computer the feed's not great. I do apologize for that. I went to go live, and after being sick last week, I felt really bad. So, but it came up and it said that I didn't have a network connection. And then it started to work. So I don't know what's going on. It must be a Facebook thing. <coughs> okay. Sorry about that. Pop this one up just so I can shove it up a little bit more. The longer you leave it though, the harder it is to uh, pop up the paper. Oh, Vicki, I completely understand. I had a bunch of work this week too and of course I had especially after being sick last week I would have been ahead had I not been a sick but it is what it is work interferes that's for sure and this is my work on top of my architectural work so but my plan last week was to get ahead for this week when I I was having a slow week waiting for people to get back to me and then uh, I got sick so I might have napped instead. <laughs> Hi Amanda, welcome. Okay, so there's that. 
So you can see where I'm going with this, where I've got the stripes in the background all ready to go. So now I'm going to do this white strip. So this is five and a half inches long. I'm going to guesstimate that this is about three because what's left over is slightly less than what this is. And that's my architectural brain working, I swear. I'm sorry. <laughs> but so I'm going to do a three inch by four and a quarter inch piece. And this piece here should actually already be four and a quarter. So you can see where that's going to sit. I'm going to actually have to trim it down, I think, a touch. Just as a hair. And I apologize. Apparently I forgot to turn off the volume on my notifications. But if I do it now, you'll get shake on the phone. So we won't do that. So next, I'm going to glue this down, actually. Get my tear tape going. Oh, hi Francine, welcome. Sorry, not everything's popping up on the screen the way it should. Thank you for sharing, I appreciate it. So I'm going to put that piece right there. And then something I noticed in the background of this paper, I apologize, that's in my way, is, how, see those hearts in the background? I didn't have, sorry, I'm hoping, there we go. It's taking a minute for it to catch up on my laptop, so I apologize. Um, I loved the hearts, but I didn't actually have a heart to do that with. So I am going to actually just use a regular one inch circle punch. If you notice up here, they did the same thing with the butterflies, but they did three or four of the butterflies instead. Um, three rows of four instead of two rows of three. So I just have to find some paper that will work with my greens. Um, I apologize, I hate reaching in front of the camera. There is just not enough space. So this would work, but I don't love the white in the background. And that would also work if I had to. Then we have the eggs. Hmm. I think we're gonna use this dinosaur page. I'm more, less inter, actually, you know what, no, I'm gonna use this right here, this circle piece. I think it'll work really well and I'll tie my colors in really well. I also have a bunch of scrap of it. So I'm just gonna pull out one of the scrap pieces rather than cut a full sheet. Of course my scraps are sticking together. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna cut six and we'll see where we're at then. So one. I have to stagger them a little bit. Two. Three. Four. Five and six. I do think I'm going to have to get, oh no, maybe not. Maybe this will work just about right. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to, yeah, if I place them so that they're on those lines in between, uh, you know what, I think I like them better with the I'm just trying to line them up with my strips across. So I think we'll go this way. I apologize again for that. Hopefully there won't be too many messages coming through. 
So then we're going to go one more and two more. Okay. And I'm going to tape those down really quick. And I kind of like them being a little all over the place because I think they'd be difficult to line up anyhow. But I do want a somewhat straight line of them. So I don't know about you guys, but I rarely work with a ruler on my desk. It's just a bad habit. But you can always use the edge of a paper to line things up. So if you line up the bottom edge, it'll create a straight line, kind of an L shape. And that can be really helpful. I keep losing my ruler if we're being really honest. So, okay, there. And of course. <laughs> okay, so now the downfall is that I can't see the stripe as easily. So I'm just going to lightly place them, that way they pop up if I need to. But honestly, there's only going to be about an eighth of an inch in between each one, so I should be okay. Oops. Maybe not. Okay. I'm going to have to move these ones down just a touch. See, isn't it always good to see other people make mistakes? <laughs> there we go. Perfect. And that'll make lining these ones up much easier. Okay, one, two, three, and four. I have to be honest that uh, I was working away today and didn't realize what time it was until it was almost, it was three o'clock and I was like, oh my goodness, I have to think up an idea and I have to put, get all the materials gathered. So I do apologize. <laughs> but then once I saw the paper, I was like, I know exactly what I'm going to do. So it'll work out perfectly. And I'd been wanting to remake the card in the magazine. I thought it was super cute and simple. I shouldn't say too simple. This is taking me a while, but um, just something a little bit different. Okay. And there we go for that stuff. And next up, we need our dinosaur. So I'm going to grab the stamp set and I had already picked out some colors so I have to admit I'm having a hard time using anything other than the T-Rex. I just think he's so adorable that I keep having to use them. So you're going to have to bear with me because I'm using them again. Hopefully I'm not the only one though that uh, really likes him and his stubby little arms. He's just so cute. So you could cut the dinosaur out of the DSP or the designer series paper, but I, one, wanted him specific colors, which is always a challenge. And uh, two, I would just really like stamping. So there we go. Put them down in the corner here. Hopefully, there we go. 
So one trick I did find when I first started using these stamps, because they're photopolymer and they're a full coverage stamp, um, they're fairly solid. They're, they are kind of a speckled. They're meant to not be perfect. But I did have some troubles getting them to work right away. So there is a couple tips that you can do. You can ink the stamp in our Versamark ink first, then ink it immediately before stamping it in the color of your choice until it's seasoned. Once it's seasoned, you don't need to do that. You can also put one of our silicone mats underneath it and that will give you enough give that it pushes down fairly well and uh, works great. So those are two little tips to try and make it work a little bit better. You're going to find that anytime we have a solid image of the photopolymer, so the stamps that you can see straight through, you're going to have to do something similar. Um, one of those two tips works really well. And sometimes you need both. So try them. Um, but once they get going and you've used them a couple of times, it's not a problem. They work perfectly. If they don't, Stampin' Up! actually guarantees all their products and they are extremely good about fixing any issues that you may have so don't worry about it just contact me as your demo or the demonstrator that you purchased from and we can get in touch with Stampin' Up! it's fairly honestly I've never had a problem getting Stampin' Up! to fix them I shouldn't even say that it's fairly easy it's extremely easy to get them fixed so, and I should have mentioned, I used the Pretty Peacock and the Granny Apple Green inks to get them. The one thing that you will notice is that I stamped his spikes off to one side, and that's to give space for the dies. If you weren't die cutting it, you can place it right against, and it's not a problem. Okay. And the one last thing I want to do while I have these out is stamp my sentiment. The look who's hatched. Right there. And with photopolymer stamps, another tip is to place them face down on your table and then pick them up with your block. Um, photopolymer in particular, although it does happen with some of the other colors as well or other um, stamps as well, can easily um, be maneuvered. So you can turn it purposely and kind of curve it, which is great if that's the technique you're looking for. But quite often it's not quite what we were looking for and it was just an accident. So the easiest way is to place it face down. It generally lands fairly naturally and then pick it up with your block. So... I'm going to just clean that off. And that's our Stampin' Chamois. The nice thing about the Stampin' Chamois is that you don't need anything special. So this purple sponge here is just our, our cleaning pad now. Every time you go to use it, you just rinse it under the sink and get it wet. And it works with just water and it's perfect. I love that thing. Um, so much easier. I do keep it in one of our wood mount cases just for traveling because I do, we do crops once a month um, and I like having it in the case because then I don't put anything against it accidentally because that is something I would do. So I'm just going to grab my die cutting machine here. I'll put my card aside so that you can see. There was a couple things I wanted to cut. I don't know how much. There we go. You're not going to get to see the whole thing, I think, but uh, it will come pretty close. I'm going to put my T-Rex down, because again, who doesn't want a T-Rex? Then we're going to put, this is what happens when I pull everything off. So then you got to fix it. And you, you'll never get it back the same way. I want his little spine. Oh, I may not be able to cut them in the. I'm not going to be able to cut them in the same run, which is fine. <clears throat> Sorry, and I want this egg. Oh my goodness! There we go. Because after all, it's look who's hatched. 
so knead that egg. And something else is Stampin' Up! has recently changed manufacturers of their dye. <laughs> and let me tell you, they cut so much nicer. I always thought there was never really that big a problem. They were great. And then you get something that's better. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh my goodness, where have I been? How have I been missing on the, out on this? So, if you have not tried them yet, you definitely want to give them a go. Okay, so the thing I've discovered with the spines, and I did this yesterday too, when I was die cutting, is that it fits in between quite well, and it's going to leave some area there. I apologize for the yelling. Um, it's going to leave some area in there for you to attach it to the dinosaur with. You could leave more white around the spikes as well. That's completely up to you. But that turned out pretty much perfect when you get looking at it. I'm going to set that aside for a second. We will put this aside. I'll leave the dies up there. Okay. So, my first step is actually going to be a to attach the spine to him. And I've discovered, because you know I have to use the tear tape because it's me, that little pieces of tear tape to go around the curve work quite well. They will be some off, just like that, if you can't see it. And you don't need much. It's tear tape, so it's super strong. And then it is, I will admit, a little more difficult to peel off when it's only partially on, but that's okay. There. And you can see the break in the spikes, and that's where his little hand is going to go. It's just like that. And I mean, look how adorable he is. So I just have a little bit of tear tape hanging out for there. So next, I am going to put him on some dimensionals. So. So I have four, but I think I'm going to put one right here. Just when you send a card in the mail, I find having that one in the center just stops it from caving in. When the mailman puts, or I shouldn't say the mailman, the mail person puts um, excess weight on top of it. Or when it goes through sorting and it gets extra weight on top of it. And I think I'm actually going to put him in front of the egg. Just because I found it was a lot of white when the egg was in front. So I probably could have set him down, or the egg down first, and then glued him down, but that's okay. So there he is. If I was to redo this, I might re change the color of this background, but that's okay. Just to make the egg pop a little bit more. So then I had, look who's hatched, and I brought a couple punches, but I think I know what one I want. Yes, I'm going to use the tailored tag punch. And I think what I'm going to do to give it a little bit more depth is to stamp some of the leaves out of the stamp set around. So if you notice in the stamp set, we've got a leaf here um, that we can use, and I'm just going to do that. Yeah, 
and if I could find a scrap piece of paper temporarily. Sorry. They're calling the dog up there, which is not that easy. The dog thinks they're playing and they're not. <laughs> I'm just going to stick this plastic from the dimensionals underneath just so that I don't wreck my, my uh, placemat. Okay, which is probably a bad idea, but that's okay. I'm just gonna go around the outer edge so that sentiment's just peeking through the leaves. Just like that. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm gonna go. <laughs> oh, Vicky, you are much faster than I am if you were able to dock off two cards in this time. <laughs> but that is great. So that was just in grainy apple green. And I'm just gonna throw that wrapper in the garbage just so that it doesn't get all over the place because that ink will not dry on that wrapper. If you were to stamp on shiny things like a plastic wrapper like that, you need stays on ink, which we do sell in black um, because it's an alcohol based so it'll dry faster and it can go on top. So, but you can see how the green helps make it stand out a little bit better. Grab some more dimensionals. Now that I've used their wrapper. <laughs> oh, casing's fine, Vicky. That's a good idea, actually. It makes things a lot faster. I have to admit, I still have to do a bunch of projects for this week um, for classes. And there is going to be a lot of casing going on tonight because very shortly here, as soon as I'm done, I need to send my mom home. She's down babysitting for me. And uh, then I still have two more cards to create for tomorrow for card class and a couple scrapbook pages plus the crop stuff. Still lots to do. So I think next I'm actually going to use the Peacock, Pretty Peacock 2019-2021 uh, in color faceted dots. If I can get them open. Thankfully I have another set. We'll just try those. <laughs> Usually it's not a problem. It just seems to be where they're sitting. Probably doesn't help I cut my nails the other day. There we go. Perfect. Oh, Vicky, Saturday, you still have lots of time. <laughs> oh, I'm worried about tomorrow. <laughs> so I think I'm gonna go here. And here, and then maybe one down at here. All right, and I think that's it for me for today. So, like I said, I tried to case a little bit, but change it up a little bit. This card here in our Stamp and Success magazine. So this is a magazine that's exclusive to demonstrators only. And um, in order to get it, you get you need to join Stampin' Up! And one way you can do so is to join my team at www.lisahenderson.stampinup.net slash join the fun. And part of the benefits of joining at the moment is that you get an additional $40 in your starter kit of any product you choose. So you get to choose a $205 worth of any Stampin' Up! products that you would like that are in the current catalogs. Um, and you can run it as a business or you can just 
get the discount on the amazing products. So again, that's www.lisahenderson.stampinup.net slash join the fun. So I really appreciate everybody joining me today. I apologize. I'm a little quieter, excuse me, than normal, but um, I've, was, I've been sick the last week, so I don't have much of a voice yet. It's getting there. It, it's fine. It's just a lot of talking and then I lose it. So I do appreciate you all sticking around and watching this video. So thank you. And hopefully we'll see you next week at 3.30. Thanks. Bye now.